Hi everyone, Dr. Fink here. Today we'll talk about intramuscular versus subcutaneous injection for gross home. Quick disclaimer, this is not medical advice, it's just entertainment. For those with a medical condition, please consult with your physician. And I don't recommend the use of gross hormone for performance enhancing purposes. Gross hormone is illegal without prescription in many countries. So keep that in mind, please. All right, so injecting gross hormone intramuscularly versus subcutaneous which one is will you get more benefits let's draw a quick diagram here so that we can understand it easier so here we have the time frame and here we have our gross hormone concentration so intramuscular injection will be very fast with the peak very high in the peak but the drop will be very fast as well so injection happen quick increase of gross hormone concentration and then we will go down very fast as well so this is intramuscular injection. What happens with subcutaneous injection? Subcutaneous injection absorption is much slower and the peak is much lower. So we have the subcutaneous injection and as you can see, that, that is the fashion subcutaneous con uh, injection leads to this type of gross hormone concentration, subcutaneous. So at one glance, we can see that intramuscular injection gives us a bigger peak but here the important thing is not the peak it is the area under the curve also called AUC area under the curve so it is simply as the name says all this area right under the curve so we will do the same for the subcutaneous injection and as you can see, the area under the curve for the subcutaneous injection is bigger than the intramuscular injection. This means that for the same amount of gross hormone, for the same injection, you will get more in the subcutaneous route of injection as compared to the intramuscular injection. As you know, gross hormone has fat burning effects, but it also has muscle burning effects. And in order to have muscle building effects, gross hormone has to travel to the liver where it's getting converted into IGF-1, insulin growth factor one. And IGF-1 is the actual anabolic muscle building hormone, okay? So if you inject intramuscularly, you will get one short peak of IGF-1, but it will go down very fast. If you inject GH subcutaneously, IGF-1 as well will be steadily released for a prolonged period of time instead of having a short peak. So you will get more of this anabolic IGF-1 hormone with the same amount of gross hormone if you inject subcutaneously instead of intramuscularly. People also ask me, should I inject right into the muscle after I train it, like local injection, let's say somebody trained tricep, should they inject right into the tricep? The short answer is no. Remember, in order to have those muscle building effects, the anabolic effects, gross hormone has to first get into the bloodstream, travel to the liver, it has to get converted into IGF-1, and only then it has the muscle building effects. So injecting locally will not be better than subcutaneously because in any case, it has to travel to the liver to get converted into IGF-1. Again, gross hormone used as performance enhancing drug without prescription can have harsh side effects, growth of organs, proliferation of cancer cells, leading to insulin resistance, and is probably illegal in uh, many countries. So I do not recommend the use of gross hormone in any case for those performance enhancing uh, purposes. I hope this video was helpful and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you for watching.